Hello, my name is Stephen Glotier and this is a pre-recorded presentation for the 2022 meeting of the Society for Mathematical Psychology. I'm going to be talking about an experiment on delayed discounting carried out in collaboration with two co-authors, Hedwig Eisenbarth and Anne Caskill, both based at Victoria University of Wellington. When given a choice, most people express a preference, all other things being equal, for rewards that arrive sooner rather than later, and this is due to a process known as delayed discounting. The fact that sooner rewards are generally preferred over later rewards probably isn't very surprising, but the observation that relative preference for two rewards can change depending on when the choice is made is normatively unexpected, but it actually occurs frequently in every, everyday life. For example, an addict repeatedly making a decision to quit and then relapsing when drugs become immediately available, um, or people spend money to obtain low value items now instead of saving for important items uh, to be bought later. Okay. As a consequence, if we can understand, improve our understanding of delayed discounting, to understand these preference reversals, there are uh, practical and applied uh, implications as well as uh, theoretical interest. Now the starting point for analysis of delayed discounting is often made as hyperbolic delayed discounting equation and that's shown in equation one in this slide here. Okay so this equation tells us that the value of a reward is a function of its magnitude or amount alpha divided by one plus k times uh, delta which is a delay to its uh, delivery. Okay, um, In the right hand uh, part of the slide here you can see a plot with a solid line of Mazur's uh, delay discounting curve. The second commonly referred to uh, simple delay discounting equation is equation 2. Uh, this also makes use of one free parameter k, a discounting parameter, uh, and this is an exponential model. The dashed line in the uh, figure shows uh, the curve generated using this, uh, this function. Um, although it's not apparent here, this uh, exponential model doesn't actually predict uh, preference reversals. In contrast, preference reversals can be readily modelled with this simple hyperbolic model, as I'll illustrate in the next slide. And here's the next slide. Okay, so if we um, look at equation three. Okay, this is an alternative way to show delay discounting curves by plotting value against position in time as opposed to delay as was done previously. So um, value, uh, equation three gives value against time for rewards which become available with delta set to some offset from t equal to zero and plotting two such curves on the same graph, one for a small reward Okay, which gets delivered at a different time point, and one for a large reward, uh, which gets delivered at a different time point, we can uh, see a theoretically interesting characteristic of Mazur's equation, and that is the presence of this uh, preference reversal zone shown in orange on the slide there. So the implication is that someone um, standing at time equal zero, uh, they're going to prefer the larger later reward over that small sooner reward. But as um, they make choices with uh, increased values of t, okay, uh, as t approaches the point where the small reward is imminently available, the value of that small reward exceeds the value of the uh, larger later reward, and you get a preference reversal. Unfortunately, although there's little doubt about the reality of preference reversals, right, there's no clear evidence that we're aware of which shows this simple hyperbolic model predicting preference reversals at the level of individual participants. And that's what we set out to explore in the current work. Now, one of the complicating factors um, is the fact that small rewards tend to be discounted more heavily than large rewards. So in our study, we wanted to see if preference reversals could be predicted a priori for individual participants, taking into account the possibility that there might be different discount rates applied to large and small rewards. Now, one interesting consequence of introducing different discount rates for small and large rewards is that the exponential discounting model is now also capable of predicting preference reversals with the constraint that the discount rate for the small rewards must be larger 
and the discount rate with a large reward. So in what follows, we're not just trying to predict preference reversals, we're also going to have a comparison of the hyperbolic and exponential discounting models. So that's a little bit of background. Let's focus on what we actually did in the experiment. OK, so we have two stages. In stage one, what we do is find maximum likelihood delay discounting parameters for a small and a large reward for each participant and for each model. So we're finding four parameters. OK, so um, little k is the k value of the discount uh, parameter for small rewards. The subscript h indicates the hyperbolic model. Big K is the discount rate parameter for large rewards. Um, the uh, subscript E is for the exponential model. So once we've got these parameters, this enabled us to find design parameters for stage two. And stage two is our critical preference reversal zone test. OK, so um, what we had here was the questions parameterized so that the LSC questions were expected to produce preference reversals. Okay, so we've got three different types of question paired, LLC, LSC, and SSC. And these have different parameters. We expect the LSC questions to show, question pairs, I should say, to show preference reversal effects. Okay, now the calculations of the values that we needed for stage two were done on the fly between stages one and two. OK, we couldn't do this in advance of the experiment, of course, because we didn't know the K values for the participants. But the transition between stages one and two wasn't signaled to the participants in any way. They just experienced a continuous sequence of questions. OK, um, OK. So let's have a look more about the design of these stage two questions. OK, so um, look at the form of the questions used, first of all, on the right hand side. OK, so we've got question pairs. Uh, question one, we ask, would you like S in D or L in big D? So S is the value of the small reward. Uh, little d is the delay to the small reward. L is the value of the large reward. And uh, d, big D is the delay to the large reward. And then we ask, would you like S now or L in D minus D? OK, so what we're effectively doing here is uh, for question one, the participant is standing at t equals zero. And for question two, the participant is effectively standing at, uh, on this particular illus illustration, at t equal to 50. OK, now, um, so for the LSC questions, we're expecting to see preference reversals. In the top left and the bottom right, OK, we've got an illustration of the LLC and the SSC condition. So in the LSC condition we expect both questions to result in choices for the later reward and in the SSC condition we expect both questions to result in choices of the smaller reward. Um, now let's just turn attention back to this plot in the top right okay um, you can see two vertical lines here okay um, these mark the lower and upper bounds on the value of D, big D, within which there exists a preference reversal zone given particular values of X, little d, little k, and big K. And in this list of values, right, X is the relative size of the small reward with respect to the large reward, which is fixed at 0.82 uh, for the experiment, whereas the values of k, uh, little k, and big K were computed for each participant for stage uh, one questions. And then what we did was work out what value of D we need to optimize something called the AB criterion. OK, so this AB criterion is calculated as the product of the difference between the value of the larger later reward and the smaller sooner reward at time zero and the difference between the value of the smaller sooner reward and the larger later reward at T is equal to D. Now, we did this um, because we wanted to compare the exponential and hyperbolic models in terms of their capacity to produce preference reversals. And these models generally predict preference reversals 
in different temporal locations. So we can't use the same experimental designs to make a fair comparison of the models. So what we've done here in parameterizing the stage two questions to maximize the AB criteria for each modeling participant is to effectively say that we can optimize these questions so that we're most likely to find preference reversals for each model and um, each participant. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, let's have a look at how the models got on. Okay, so this plot shows for the hyperbolic model in the top and the exponential model in the bottom the expected and observed results. Now, there are four possible choice patterns uh, in these stage two questions. We've got LL, okay, LS, SL, and SS. And the first character in each of these um, labels, right, indicates the choice for question one, and the second character indicates the choice for question two. So what we're interested in is the choice pattern LS. Okay, so this is the larger later choice for question one and the smaller sooner choice for question two. This is the preference reversal we've been talking about. And what we want to do is trace this through from the LS, uh, LLC panel, uh, through the LSC panel and through the SSC panel. So if we look first at the expected uh, number of LS choices in the LLC panel, we can see here in the blue bar, the expected uh, number of choices for the exponential model. It jumps up in the LSC panel and then drops back down again in the SSC panel. This is how the experiment was designed and it's exactly the same sort of thing for the hyperbolic model. What about the data? We look here at the pink bars. Okay, we can see here that the LLC panel and the LSC panel are pretty well the same, right? There's no sign of an increase in the number of preference reversals as we move through the panels. However, what does change is that people switch from LLC, uh, LL choice patterns in the LLC panel, okay, to the SS choice pattern as we go into the LSC panel. Okay, so presumably there's a preference reversal zone in between the two, but for some reason we've missed this target zone. Effectively, our participants were behaving more impulsively than we expected switching to smaller sooner reward choices as D increased. Okay, in summary, um, both models failed to predict preference reversals with optimized experimental design parameters. But the results suggest a preference reversal zone does indeed exist between our LLC and LSC question types. Why do we get this result? This result? Uh, one reason is the fact that we uh, use smaller delays in the stage one questions, an average of four months, than in the stage two questions, with the average delay is about 54 months. So this is a possible explanation. So we carried out some exploratory analyses. Um, we wondered whether or not if we changed the relative weight or the weighting of the delay, right, whether or not this would produce any different results. So we use modified versions of the original equations, okay? So now delta is uh, exponentiated by a parameter, a sensitivity parameter S. Now, when we used equation five uh, to re-estimate the K values in the stage one data for the exponential model, right, we found higher K value estimates. And this would have led us to using lower values of D in our stage two preference reversal zone test for the exponential model. Maybe we would have got a result there. Now there are more details in this experiment including other model comparisons and model fitting which you can find at the links on the slide but the key message is that we're still in search for the preference reversal zone. Thank you very much.